Hey. Oh. Hey, Pickle. And I'm letting you know my voice is finally back. Fantastic. It is episode 34 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. Analyze the lyrics. Yes. We already analyzed the number 34. Yeah, we did. We went and did a deep dive. <laughs> we did a deep dive and decided it doesn't have any significance. Yeah. And a, a lot of people will say in the comments that, uh, oh, well, this great athlete was number 34. Yeah. And I don't know who that would be. It might be, oddly enough, I might be remembering, and I bet I'm wrong, but I was like, was it Dennis? Was Dennis Rodman 34? Don't know. Okay. I don't know, but he sold out to North Korea, so I'm not down with him. <laughs> yeah, it's so the North Korea thing with him, it's so funny to be so understood to be batshit insane that when that happened, you more or less had to go, eh, that's Dennis Rodman for you. Yeah. Wow. It, it's like when Oliver Stone went to see Putin. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, all right. That's not crazy. I mean, it is. It's two crazy things. Yeah. So it becomes normal. Yeah. It's just a, well, for you, I guess this is reasonable behavior. <laughs> and thank you for the visual of uh, Kim Jong-il. Was it ill or un? Sitting next to Dennis Rodman was a great visual. Oh yeah, uh, Un, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because Ill uh, got ill, right? And he's dead now. <laughs> he did. Yeah. So ill, in fact. Yeah. He uh, died. He's Kim Jong oh, died. He, no, he did. So ill. So ill. Weird. When Johnny Carson yeah. died, this bit started between me and my friend that continues to this day, where if a particular celebrity dies. One that we like, one that we dislike, it doesn't matter. He'll call me on the phone and go, a very special guest on the show today. And we'll talk about how he's a guest on the show. Right. And, and, <laughs> and if you can believe it, his impression of Johnny Carson is actually worse than mine. So, wow. That'll, tell you. <laughs> that'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, mine is not good. I love it. The most recognizable voice probably in American TV history that yeah. somebody could do it so poorly that you don't know who they're doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had some thoughts about our friend Billy Joel uh, that oh. I wanted to share with you. I was looking at the album River of Dreams, which, I, which we talked about the song River of Dreams. You do not enjoy for the most part. For the most part. I don't it think you hate all that, but it doesn't uh, do it for me. Yeah. And I was thinking about, because that's pretty much, that is his last album, right? Yes. Yes? Yeah. And then he makes the announcement afterwards that at some point he was like, I think I'm done. Yeah. He kind of said, like, I, uh, I can't write rock and roll music anymore. Yeah. And he was like, I think that I'm full. And that's, and that's fine. And, uh, you know, weird fans will go, he needs to put out a new album. I'm like, you don't need to. I think it'd be neat if he did, because I'm curious. I'd be curious. I would love to know what kind of stuff would come out, but it wouldn't be better, I don't think. No. Paul McCartney's new album, by the way, is really good. You said. Yeah. I've not, I've not it out because uh i got fooled six or seven times in the yeah. interim the song he did with beck is great and the video is tremendous oh very cool they do some deep fake stuff so there's a young paul mccartney throughout the entire video and you're like oh that's kind of cool and then it turns out that's beck oh see nice that's the way to do it i think if these old rockers just get like somebody who's a little less old <laughs> and do uh, do a little thing. Yeah, they're what they do. Together, yeah, what they do together is fantastic. It takes. It reminds me of when he did a thing with Elvis Costello, um, Veronica. I remember the song Veronica. Yeah, that Love seemed it. like the perfect melding of what 
Elvis Costello brings to the table and what Paul McCartney brings to the table, it didn't feel like either of them sacrificed. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, this is like that, the back in the middle. Yeah. All of which is for our, one of our many other shows. <laughs> that does tie into this song. Uh, because yeah. I do think he's doing Elvis Costello. I think so too. Yeah. Now, so I was looking at River of Dreams and I was thinking about him quitting and obviously not quitting, quitting because he still tours. And I was looking at some of the lyrics on various songs, one of which I think I'm going to go ahead and pick for this week, but I'll save, tell you which one later. But there's a lot of damn lyrics on this album. It's true. Like the, the songs are very dense as far as words go. Yeah. And a lot of his earlier music, I mean, there's one song, I think it's 52nd Street, that we'll never need to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Because it's two paragraphs. It really is. So here's Second what, Street gets mentioned a lot. Yeah. So here's what I was thinking that it, it uh, dawned on me. Maybe, because he's an artist, maybe he tried really hard on this album and it was a bummer the way people reacted to it. And he was like, and that was part of the impetus for, okay, enough. Entirely possible. I also think um, a lot about that album made me think of Graceland. Yeah. And, Paul Simon, and like, oh, Paul Simon uh, is a great lyricist uh, and a poet. And there are, <laughs> there are a lot of fucking words in his songs. Yeah. And uh, that was another overlap. So I don't know to, you know, obviously I don't know to what degree that Graceland was in his head. I wonder when those two albums came out and if they were close together. You know, that, uh, that's it a good possibility. Like, it did seem like the old songs were like, I'm gonna write a song, so I'm gonna need words. And that one was more like, oh, I'm gonna try to write like poetry and I'm gonna need music. Yeah. Um, and that's probably why the music didn't really take off the same yeah. way. I feel, you know, I feel for artists sometimes like, uh, what's the name of the band that did the sweater song? Um, oh boy. Um, yeah. You got me. Yeah, I'm not going to remember the name. If anybody in the, wants to say so in the comments, it's too late. We already recorded this. Um, yeah, I won't remember talking about that. But I remember they got a lot of crap about their second album because their second album didn't sound like their first album. And then their third album sounded kind of like their first album and they got crap from people who liked the second album. And eventually they just decided to just make whatever music they wanted to make, which is the right thing to do. <laughs> That's probably the way to go. But, but man, people are a pain in the ass. Oh yeah, we're the worst. Yeah, <laughs> so... And granted, that's the theme of the show is us doing it, but <laughs> it really is. But in our defense, we're old cranks. We're allowed to do that. We are old cranks. Uh, yes, uh, I'll I'll complain even about us talking about music. <laughs> we even say which fucking song we were talking about this week. I don't think so, and uh, but... I'll go ahead and say it. It's you picked. I don't want to be alone. That's right. Yeah. which is uh, not true. I do want to be alone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is a preference. Yeah. Um, yeah, from uh, Glass Houses, which had a lot of B-sides that were great, I thought. Yeah. Obviously, it had a lot of hits. It was huge for him. Um, but it was like the hits were the ones you thought would be the hits. But the B-sides are all good songs. It's, they're like well-written, nice, thoughtful. Mm -hmm. interesting rock songs do you remember when you were a young man buying albums and you'd buy an album because you liked these two songs and you realized ah nothing else is good and it would make you mad so often yes and, and then that, sometimes you would do that and then play it a bunch of times and go oh that uh, there's a third one that's pretty good and yeah. a fourth one that's decent and then eventually you'd be like i will kill for any of these <laughs> Yeah. yeah there were definitely Even like there was a time when i was trying to make a case for where's the orchestra 
uh, <laughs> the very B side on Nylon Curtain, I think. Right. We're like, that's a great song. <laughs> I don't, yeah, it might not be. But, be. but here's what I'll, so like when I was a young man buying albums, I would just buy any damn album because I had disposable income and, you know, you're young and stupid. Pretty nice. I remember buying like a Thompson Twins album and man, is it crap. And, <laughs> and I remember being kind of mad at myself because I didn't realize that they also did a cover of Revolution on it. <laughs> uh, a cover of Revolution is, is a very funny idea all by oh itself. God, the best thing about it too is it's this very 80s version. You know what? I'm going to remind myself. I'm going to link. That'll be the thing I link to at the end. The extra video. I'll because so I do, the video for revolution yeah at the end of each episode i have a video that i recommend that's sort of related but it's not sometimes it's not billy joel like this uh when in rome i recommended the rome sketch on snl because it's hilarious with that <laughs> Sandler. but Thompson <laughs> twins revolution is criminally bad oh no the best part is they go Oh, they do a thing that, man, if the Thompson Twins were Billy Joel, they go, you say, you want a revolution? And then it goes, big explosion sound. <laughs> ah, fantastic. So they've redefined what kind of revolution. Yeah, exactly. Even being talked about. Right. Yeah, so I was thinking about that river of dreams and just how I was like, you know, I think he just tried really damn hard. And yeah, I think he tried really hard, and also he was uh, sort of still freshly married, and had a kid at that point, mm -hmm. and probably was like, "Oh, I'm gonna keep being the artist I was, but also I have a little kid, so I'm gonna write a little kid song." Yeah, <laughs> or two, and then you're like, "Oh, Bill." I think that happens probably to a lot of artists. They have a kid, and they either try not to let it be part of their art or they welcome it way wholeheartedly yeah it works or it doesn't work like i mean somebody like jim gaffigan has a ton of kids talks about it all the time and is great yep absolutely and then other i think there are other comedians who like have a kid and they're like eh, now nah, you're not good <laughs> <laughs> Jim Gaffigan did a strange thing because he kind of started to peak after he had kids, so that helped. Because if right. you watch early Jim Gaffigan, it's good, but it's honestly not great. Yeah. It's a guy finding his voice, and then whatever his wife does to help him write, she's clearly actually helping because he's just better. Yeah. They're just an and actual team. Some people don't have a lot to talk about until they have kids. Yeah, true. You know, um, depending on how old they are. Yeah. Um, Life experience. Yep. That's why, I, that's why I do 20 to 30 minutes on my dogs. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. Do what you know. Yeah. I got a new line. I So I performed live, by the way. And let me tell you something real quick, and then we'll get into the song. I performed in Paso Robles which is wine country. I do not know why, but Paso Robles loves me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have a bad set there. Fantastic. And, and beautiful. Yeah, it's just was, it's every time I've gone to do the show, the person who booked me the first time didn't know who I was. And I had this great experience that you have as a performer when you're a nobody, when before the show, they're like, oh, okay, you're one of the comics. Great, great, great. And they don't want to talk to you because they don't care. You're just, just dumb, this dummy who's going to perform. And they're going to be disappointed. They know. And then afterwards, they love talking to you because you were great. Yeah. And I love that feeling. Yeah, that's pretty great. When you turn them. Yep. Yep. When I got turned out. <laughs> that's what <laughs> yeah. expression that's means, great. right? Yeah, that's what, that's exactly what that means. You nailed it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have sort of the opposite experience because you know I write for the show. Yeah, and uh, they automatic there's expectation up front, so they love you, 
and then you do the show and you just hope they still do. And then, <laughs> then that's as good as it gets. Is you, hey, you broke even. Oh, we Great. made we made <laughs> that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I got a new like hey, that was really good. <laughs> like yeah, no, we're supposed to be. <laughs> I got a new line because I will often talk about there's a big chunk I do about how people with kids really want you to know that dogs aren't the same as kids. It's important to them oh, yeah. to know they're not the same. And I just said in the moment, I go, and I guess that's true because I've never been disappointed in my dogs. Got a huge <laughs> laugh. And I was like, oh, keeper. So I wrote it down. It's great. Right. Fantastic. But also, that's just my way of saying, you guys with kids, stop doing that. We know, we know they're not kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not. We're not confused. Yeah, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't have mine. Mine pee outside. I hope yours don't. <laughs> Even when there's leashes on both of them, we can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, you dude. don't have to have one to know how they operate. <laughs> That's right. A lot of lore. And in fact, those of us who know really well how they operate. Well, we don't have them. We don't have them. Um, Jim Bros, everybody. Yay. Good night, everybody. And I get my two <laughs> free drinks. And I get my two free drinks and then I go home. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, All right. We should start recording. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> so we picked uh, I Don't Want to Be Alone Tonight. And that is a feeling I have sometimes. Yes. But, used to be more common in single times. Yeah. As uh, then you were alone sometimes. Yeah. When you were single, probably more than not. Yeah. I mean, you personally, I mean, one, I was alone an awful lot when I was single. Yeah. Now I'm not. And uh, now it's kind of a treat <laughs> when you're alone. And you're like, oh, I, I, I have the remote. There are two kinds of alone. That's what you realize. Because there's the alone of like, well, I'm, I'm on my own tonight, and that's a great yeah. kind of alone. Yeah. And then there's the alone of like, oh, boy, if I died, who would find the body first? And <laughs> very different yeah. kinds of alone. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, your evening can take a turn. <laughs> um, and this, uh, this is obviously about that kind. <laughs> this is a couple of people who are concerned about who might find their body. Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and start. Um, yeah. She said she'd meet me in the bar at the Plaza Hotel, wear a jacket and tie. What's the occasion? I like that. Just, yeah. I like the like, why am I, why do I have a jacket and tie here? What yeah. am I hoping? What am, why did I try? What am I hoping for? Why are you making, why are you making me try? Yeah. What are we hoping will happen here? And I've, I've been in that position of like, you know, ironing a shirt or whatever for a thing and going, man, I got to put on a tie. I hope this isn't stupid. I, I believe the ladies famously say, uh, I shaved my legs for this. Right. Yes. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Shaving your legs is way more trouble than putting on a tie, but the premise is the same. Yeah. Friend of mine, comic. It says she has stopped shaving anything for anyone else. If a thing gets shaved, it's because it was convenient for her. And if you don't like an unshaven whatever, that's all right. You can go find someone else. <laughs> yeah. That is a good place for a lady to get to where she's like, nope, I got to take care of my body stuff for me. Yeah. Not for Great. you, dummy. Uh, what's the occasion? She just smiled and wouldn't say why. So here I am standing, waiting in the lobby, sweating bullets in the stupid old suit. <laughs> right. I love stupid old suit because, man, I feel that way. I feel that way about some shoes where I'm like, God damn it. I know I got to try, but. Yeah. Like you're meeting, now for me, now it's more like when you're meeting a boss or whatever, because you're like, oh, there, or you're meeting a booker and you're like going to have to be nice. Well, for me, yeah, it's I have to go to a thing. Yep. There's a lot of things in my business that you have to go to. Yep. And 
I don't know if this is your experience, but every time I buy a suit, it is good once. <laughs> <laughs> the next time you put it on, it's a stupid old suit. Yeah, absolutely. Ugh, and it's the same 12 people I'm seeing at all the different things. Yeah. Like, it, so I do feel like I'm walking in and going, here's the suit again. Yeah. You guys want to look at the suit? <laughs> the best choice I ever made because of that very situation is, and I recommend it the next time you have to buy a suit, is buy one that's a little, go ahead and buy one that's odd and a little more daring than you feel. Sure. Because it's going to hold on to its value as something to show you off longer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, honestly, buy a Steve Harvey suit. Just do it. Yeah. And don't get either a black or a blue one, but don't get both because you will wear the wrong pants with the wrong jacket. Yep. Unless your bedroom is super brightly lit. You will fuck that up at least once. Yep. I absolutely believe in wearing a prince level. The next time I buy a suit, it's going to be prince level absurd. <laughs> because love that guy and he was right. Just wear those. Yeah. And then you, then you show up the second time. You're like, it's the suit again. Everybody's like, I love the suit. The suit's back. I know you got to go, but can the suit stay? <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere you go where you have to wear a dumb suit everybody else has to wear a dumb suit too yep. at the dumb wedding yep. they're like ah, brown this is brown too but a little bit different brown you might as well pop out yep. pink suit do you remember the story of what I did at Paul's wedding uh, you froze for a second, so I don't know which story you just said. Oh, do you remember the story of what I did at Paul's wedding? I don't. Um, so he had a particular suit style picked out, so we all had to go pick up our suit. And I went and I was like, hey, can I get mine with tails? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy went, sure, because he don't care. You don't care. He's not foreseeing events. So I was the only one there with tails. <laughs> it was great. And Paul, to his credit, was like, eh, that's just Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it truly is. He was not mad. He was great. Oh, fantastic. And when she sees me, she busts out laughing. You're a sad sight, honey, but you look so cute. And... I like that a lot. It's very, um, it's kind of gentle, really. It's very gentle. It's very, it does feel like 80s rom-com moment. Yeah. And it's him uh, being very self-deprecating in an unusual way for him. Yeah. He's usually in charge of all the moments, or at least the smart guy. Yeah. Situations, and he's like sweating bullets in a stupid suit. Uh, in the lobby at the I, the Plaza Hotel, by the way, which I, I've had drinks at the Plaza Hotel. It's very nice, as you might guess from the name. Sure. And it's located on a plaza. Um, but it, it would be a very awkward place to be <laughs> waiting by yourself for yeah. someone to come have a drink with you. Oh, uh, yeah, because you don't want that moment when you realize, oh, they forgot or they're not coming and then you're stuck. Yeah. I also like that this is all her idea. She set up this, whoever this lady is. Yeah. It was like, you pushed him around. <laughs> it was like, Here's what you wear. You're going to meet me at the Plaza Hotel. Stand there and wait. Uh, and then I will laugh at you when I arrive. Yeah. Um, which, all of which goes to my mind, makes it feel even more like an Elvis Costello song. Yeah where he seems like a guy who's just uncomfortable in the world and like is a cool rocker for sure. Yeah. Um, but came, the, came there the hard way, I think. Yeah. Um, well, he's definitely like a lot of musicians where when he was learning to be a musician, he was probably dumb nerd at school no one liked. Or, for sure if he's not a musician. He's not cool. Yeah. 
Yep, absolutely. Not a cool guy. It's funny, being a musician is one of the coolest things you can be. The effort you have to put in to be one makes you kind of a loner and people make fun of you for, and they shouldn't, but that's because people are dumb. <laughs> or dumb and mean. Look at that guy, good at the piano. What an idiot. Is that kind of stupid? I'm going to business school. Yeah. I'm going to do something I hate and make a small amount of money. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember the kids at my school. There was kids who, and the funny thing is the kids who were really good at music were not popular. The kids who just picked up a guitar and made some dumb band that was going nowhere, they were fine because they didn't try. Oh, yeah. Right. They didn't try. Um, they were in a band. Yep. Yeah. Loud and stupid. Also, the hierarchy of instruments. Yeah. Didn't matter how good you were at the flute. <laughs> yeah. You still suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in high school times. Now yeah. it's very respectable. Yeah, everybody loves the flautist now. Oh, sure. Oh, so sure. Cool. Now. Oh, yeah. Now, if you're a flautist, you're getting all kinds of ladies. <laughs> Um, do you want to do the next part too, since it is sort of the chorus? Oh, sure. I'll get in for the verse. That sounds good. I don't want to be alone anymore. I was checking you out. I was just making sure. Just checking you out. I was just making sure. Just making sure of what? I don't know. She's testing him. Yeah. But, all right. Uh, Wear a jacket and a tie and wait for me at the plaza. Oh, so yeah. To all of that. So you passed some sort of test. <laughs> that, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. She's probably been there a little while and she's going, man, that suit looks stupid. And he sure is sweaty. No, I don't <laughs> want to be alone anymore. And I want you tonight. Although you hurt me before. It uh -huh. didn't matter that I felt like story. Now there's a story. Yeah. This is an X. We're going back to the well, as they say, because, <laughs> you know, well, this was stupid before, but also it was something before, and now I want something as opposed to nothing. Right. That's good and sad. I like that. <laughs> it is good and sad. <laughs> it didn't matter that I felt like a fool because I forgot once you walked through the door, I said, I'm sweet. sorry, but she said it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying that was a very sweet sentiment. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, but she said it was cool. And I like that phrase too. Um, mm -hmm. I, there's two times when you say that. You say that when you really is not a big deal. You know, hey, sorry. It's like, oh, no, right. no, it's cool. I was, who cares? And then you also say it when somebody's like, hey, man, sorry, I completely broke your heart. No, no, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't certainly don't want to start talking about it. Yeah. Because uh, I came here to get laid. Yeah. I haven't been thinking about that constantly. I haven't just <laughs> constantly been a little mad. And I yeah. haven't just recently said horrible things about you privately in my head that I'm now going to pretend aren't my thoughts. Because <laughs> what good would that do me? Because I don't want to be alone tonight anymore. I don't want to be alone anymore. Ah, that, that's pretty yeah. great. Uh, that nonchalant, the nonchalant, it's okay. Oh, God, that's great. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry, but she said it was, I also like that it was cool. It's cool, <laughs> which is just forced language. Yeah. Um, if it was really cool, she would have said, like, it's, I understand what happened. It's all right. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> yeah it's very deer in the headlights and very much yeah let's not talk about it anymore you might ruin the chance that we can do it yeah, yeah. right <laughs> right yeah which you know as when we were single people we remember that yeah that like uh stop talking yeah this is going great yeah don't say what things that make you sad and don't, yeah, don't, I don't want to hear how your father treated you. This, this is a bad time to talk. I do want to hear about it, but not right now. Yeah. Maybe uh, after. 
we've done things and then I'm yeah. leaving anyway. What? Well, I'm, or while I'm drifting off to sleep. <laughs> for bad people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we knew that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So he dumped her or hurt her in some way and she dumped him. Yeah. Um, probably that. Um, yeah, it feels like he did something jacked up and she said no more. No more. And then she said, hey, several months later, yeah. uh, meeting a string of shittier guys, maybe. Yeah. Hey, you live near the plaza, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like it. I do feel like uh, in very few words, kind of the backstory's there. Yeah, there's good melancholy in all of that. Yeah, now we're back to more typical Billy Joel fair. <laughs> like, oh, something shitty happened. <laughs> Somebody behaved poorly. I was mean to a lady. Uh, but it's uh, all working out for one night. Yeah. Um, really great. I also, it, it's very, <laughs> very uh, rock and roll that like, it's not clear who's talking a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, the way it's like when he first says, I don't want to be alone anymore, it's I think it's clearly her talking. Yeah. Um, and it's like, although you hurt me before, it didn't matter that I felt like a fool for a minute. I'm like, which one of you is that? Yeah. Because I forgot when she walked through the door. I said, I'm sorry. She said it was cool. I don't want to be alone. I'm like, <laughs> wait, who? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think you get it. Yeah, it takes a second for you to know for sure that's him. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will proceed. Indeed. It's so confusing choosing sides. Nice. Uh, just nice uh, uh, linguistics. Yeah confusing choosing sides in the heat of the moment just to see if it's real i'm quite sure what he means yeah um well so the one thing i i could definitely relate to the idea of being with somebody and thinking is this a real thing or are we just doing this now <laughs> right yeah there's definitely been i'm sure you've been in on either side of that door where you're like the person who thinks it means something and the person who, you know. Oh, sure. And you know the other person thinks it means nothing, but you go for it anyway, or yeah. vice versa. You you know it means nothing. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Grim. The worst version of that is when you feel like it doesn't mean anything, but then you'd like could I make this mean something? Because I'd like to have a thing that mean, meant something. That one's the worst. Because you just do that to yourself at that point. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the worst, but it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least it's the most confusing. Because the truth of the matter is, if you don't think it means anything, and they do, or vice versa, those suck. But the person who tries to squeeze meaning into it, ends up hurting the other person more anyway. Right. That's what I, anyway. Yes. And you're the bad guy and you thought you were trying to be a good guy. Yeah. Or gal. No, it's always the guy. It's mostly the um, guy. It's mostly the guy. Uh, it's so erotic having you tell me how it should feel. I never need to hear him sing the word erotic, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get what he's saying. Like it's a, it's nice having you run this show because I was the dick running the show before. Yeah, um, and I blew it, so <laughs> it's it's really nice having you tell me how it should feel. Yeah, and it is kind of cool when ladies say, "Hey, this is the thing I like. Don't do the other thing." Right. Yeah, it's by all means. Whether or not it's even erotic, it's just easier. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I don't do the thing with the. Uh, well. you, you know, if you want to be a good performer, you got to take notes. Yeah, that's right. So 
Give me the notes. So you don't like yeah. the you don't like the thumb thing. Okay. Yeah, no. I feel like just the name thumb thing <laughs> takes it out of the running. <laughs> But I'm avoiding all the hard, cold facts that I've got to face. So ask me just one question when this magic night is through. Could it have been just anyone or did it have to be you? Ah. Oh. That's and great. That's great. It's I have the same problem where I'm like, who's talking? <laughs> yeah. Is she saying, ask me one question when this magic night is through? Is he, who's asking, could it have been just anyone or did it have to be you? Now, here's the way I interpret this. The way I interpret this is this is a thing. If, if, a, if this was a duet, you would sing mm. that part together because it's the question <laughs> they're asked. They're both asking that same question because oh, I like it. they were dating before. So it's more than a one night stand because right. they, they have a history, but the truth is they both have this nagging feeling that they showed up at the Plaza Hotel simply because they didn't want to be alone. Right. And not because it mattered who they weren't alone with. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, my and or is this a rekindle? Yeah. Or is it uh a relationship with benefits. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, I like that idea that they're both on it. They really, you know, it should have been a duet. That would have cleared up a lot of things. Yeah, this would make you a lovely duet. Yeah, I could see that. You could countrify this too. Just looking at the lyrics, man. This oh, sure. a nice country style song. Sure, oh. change the hotel. Yeah, no, don't <laughs> because <laughs> you know you're because then the idea of the guy uncomfortable in a suit really holds up oh sure and the, and the bullets <laughs> and the bullets <laughs> uh, i don't want to be alone anymore i was checking you out i was just making sure no i don't want to be alone anymore and I want you tonight, although you hurt me before. Now I think maybe it's the other person who's singing it. Yeah. It's the same chorus, but now it's from the other POV. Yeah. It didn't matter that I felt like a fool because I forgot when she walked through the door. I said, I'm sorry, but she said it was cool. And I don't want to be alone anymore. Yeah. You know, it, sometimes you, you'll there will be songs where the chorus is just this repetitive thing, right? And that's very common. There, and mm -hmm. it's for lack of better, for lack of any other theory, it mostly just sounds like people are like, "Well, I wrote enough words. Here's some in the middle. We'll just do." But sometimes, and this song is a good example, the repetitive lyrics really work for the story. Yeah. I like when the repetitive chorus is imbued with a different meaning each time. Yes. And what more we've learned. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's a that's a very country fried thing. Yeah. There's a very common song structure, which will be like, when I was a little kid, my dad said this stuff to me. And it'll be the chorus. And then it'll be like, then I grew up and I said this stuff to my kid. Same chorus. Yeah. And I got old and died and I went to heaven and God said this to me and it'll be the same chorus. Right. It's a very common structure. Uh, yeah. And the, there's always a mention of the pearly gates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like it. You don't have to change the words if you change the meaning. Yeah. Uh, and with the other words just drilling down into the sadness too just yeah repeat, repeating i don't want to be alone anymore yeah i mean that's a great cry yeah that's great a plaintive cry and then there's a, a very horny sax solo <laughs> <laughs> as per standard issue bill yep i like the music in this one too and this is a good one to contrast with the when in Rome 
saxophone. <laughs> yeah. Because this is a good one. This is a good example of a musician showcasing their talent in a song where it belongs nicely. Whereas when in Rome is just honestly, I'm like, did you, that's not, I know that's not a MIDI file, but it sounds like it. They're not even trying. Whereas this, they're trying. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's, and it's, yeah, very much matches the tone of the song. So tell you what we'll do here, because the last part is the chorus again. So how about I'll do the first half of this. Of this little bridge. Yeah. In fact, I'll just do the th first three, four, I guess. I want to do the three lines and give you the four lines, because, you know, regenerate chorus. <laughs> I'm, I'm good either way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what the ladies say. What? <laughs> I'll stand up, I'll stand up. <laughs> but don't you know that it's wrong? It's wrong, it's wrong. But like the song, being caught by the wink of an eye, I can't be sure we'll get along, but I'm willing to try as long as you can tell me. I don't want to be alone anymore. Here's what's funny too is I like the long. I'm not sure what I think about being caught in the wink of an eye. It's uh, from a song. Is it? I'm assuming because he says, but like the song. Right. That's like, I'm like, is it a song only he knows? What song? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what song. Um, feels like Sinatra. Yeah. But uh, anything I don't know kind of feels like Sinatra. <laughs> I, but I really like, I can't be sure we'll get along. I'm Googling it. Oh, good. While you, while you do that, I'll just talk about, I really like, I can't be sure we'll get along as a lyric because they have this history and it wasn't great before, or even if it was good, it certainly ended poorly. So I can't be sure we're actually even going to get along with each other, but I'm willing to try. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I'm not finding it. There's a, a million songs that have the wink of an eye. Well, OK, then he's right. But like any song. <laughs> <laughs> like at least 400 songs. <laughs> you know that song. La, la, it goes la, 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 wink of an eye. Oh, that's funny. So then I think it's an error. Not I mean, it's not. It's his song. But I think it's an error to assume that we'll know which one, and that's why it's weird. Yeah, you know, like the, you know, it's like the song says, "I love you." <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that one. All right. That's the one. You gotta, you gotta be more specific, bud. Yeah. You know, like the song says, "Newspaper taxis." Uh, oh, okay, and now I know which song you're talking about. Yeah. Newspaper taxis appear on the shore. Okay, got it. Yeah, I know the song, but now how does this track? <laughs> <laughs> I can Google it, but it's not. You're not hitting on me very effectively, bud. I can't be sure we'll get along, but I'm willing to try. I like that a lot. I do. It's the whole little uh, bridge here. It sort of epitomizes the. Is this a good idea? It feels like a good idea. Maybe it is a good idea. Yeah. And the conclusion seems to be like, this is a great idea as long as you can say you don't want to be alone. Yep. In other words, the only reason we're fucking is you don't want to be alone. <laughs> yeah. As long as you can promise me this is a one night stand, we're golden. Yeah. You're trying to start up that relationship again. I don't, I don't think it's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then you'll have that uh, awful thing where yep. you're you, you, say, did it. you say the right things and you're very engaged before yes afterward you're like okay stay engaged oh i can't <laughs> oh no Ugh. oh it's that awful thing also of like you successfully broke up with somebody and got over it and now you're back yeah now you're back in it and you have to either re-break up or stay here forever or wait till she's mad enough to break up with you <laughs> because she can tell you regret it. 
Yeah. Nobody needs any of those. Man, relationships. Just always have sex with someone new. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> I don't mean like daily. I mean, after if you break up with somebody, yeah. stay, stay broken. Or if that's the kind of life you leave, lead daily, good for you. you God know. bless. It's good cardio. Yep. As long as you don't hurt anybody and everybody understands that uh, you don't want to be alone. Yeah. But just for a day or, you know, most of an evening. That's or, it. you know, until the car wash ends, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Man, I, it, that is one of, the, one of the nicer things about being in my 50s is just... I wouldn't even, I don't even like the idea of doing it every day. I don't even like the idea. Oh, yeah. I've, I'll, I have uh, started jerking off and stopped. <laughs> I'm like, ah, don't feel like it. Now, were your feelings hurt? <laughs> <laughs> I left myself like 11 text messages that night. <laughs> That's so great. I'm wrong. That's no, so just I, didn't, I was in the shower too long already. I was like, eh. I've definitely now, I definitely had the idea where I was like, do I need to jerk off? I was like, oh, I guess I don't. All right. That's great. <laughs> great. Saved myself a little trouble. Yeah. And a little rapid heartbeat. So then that means for sure the only reason you were thinking about doing it is like, I'm here. I had uh, opportunity, but no motive. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. Lordy, Lordy, you're... Uh, you remember when you had the opportunity in your 20s, you're like, opportunity, all I need. Motive was pre-existing at all, all times. Yeah. So you forget sometimes, you're like, I'm 55, and you're like, opportunity. Oh, right. I don't care. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> I uh, did it two days ago and it takes a little while. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to put too much stress on the system. Yeah. I might need the system. Yep. Sometimes in your 50s too, you will think to yourself, oh, I think I might be all out. I think there's no more stuff in there. Yeah. It might, it's like the, the actual me uh, mechanism might start coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, this this is taking a turn. I just feel like, I, I don't know if this is why Bruno turned in, was to hear us talking about this, but that's all right. That's fine. He should know. He's yeah. young now. Oh, yeah. This is what you got to look forward to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, I find yeah. myself saying that as part of setups more and more. Here's something you young guys got to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, then so that's just an act eventually. Yeah. <laughs> or then, the, or eventually, the young guys stop coming. Yeah. And it's just old guys who are like, yeah. Yeah. I know that thing. The smartest thing I ever did by accident in stand up in stand up is I just stopped doing pop culture jokes because they didn't interest me and it wasn't because i'm a genius and realized hey this is material you won't be able to do soon yeah it just wasn't interesting to me see now i live in a world where i do pop culture jokes all the time so now I have to, it's not part of my natural environment the way it used to be. Oh, so what I have to do is research. That's weird research, isn't it? It's weird. I have to be like, oh, everybody's tweeting about Celebrity X and I don't know who that is. Yeah. So let me look up this person. I'll listen to the song they're talking about. I'll read an article about the dating they're doing. And then I'm like, ah, now, okay, I can make a joke now. Yep. I'm sure the first time you had to write a Billie Eilish joke, that was what was going on, right? Yes. Now, I, of course. The first interaction I had was I saw a girl walking around Manhattan with a Billie Eilish shirt, just the name. And I was like, I don't know what that is. Maybe there's a new musical on Broadway. <laughs> or maybe that's a shirt maker. Yeah. It was a... Uh, uh, 
it was a sequel musical that they don't it was a sequel musical that they do sometimes to billy elliott yeah yeah <laughs> he had to change surnames yeah because they found out he was dancing it was about a lady who doesn't like to dance it was a different kind you know yeah. taking up she, the billy elliott she wanted to be a coal miner and they wouldn't let her <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I have to now do like su supplemental research for pop culture. Luckily, we do a lot of political jokes, and I'm I'm news watching age, so yeah. it works perfectly. And uh, the Kardashians just are still doing whatever they did 25 years ago, so we're fine. Yeah, we're texting and uh, dating guys. Yeah, I try very hard. Um, do you know friendly Frank Conniff? You know that guy, the comic? I do. Yeah. Somebody had tweeted about music and how none of the music of today, blah, blah, blah. And he just tweeted, you know what? Nobody has ever been right when they've said that. In yeah. every generation, that's just not ever true. It's so true. And so, yeah, no, while you're remembering is how young you were. Yep. And how much you liked that. And it was funny to me because he pointed out something just reasonable that I have said myself. I'm like, you might not like a certain kind of music mainly because it ain't for you. Yeah. Oh, well. You're not the demo. Yeah. It's and okay to not be the demo. Yeah. They, kids need their thing. Yeah. I mean, I listened to uh, Olivia Rodrigo, is that her name? <laughs> I'm doing the thing. Is that, is that her name, the young lady with the driver's license song? Uh, very huge song, driver's license. Sure. Do you know it? No. <laughs> I heard it for the very first time on SNL when they were doing a sketch about it. So I was already way behind the curve. Um, but I listened to it. I was like, oh, it's a beautiful song that is, I am not the target market for, but I know what she's talking about. Yep. It's getting, I don't have that feeling, but I remember that feeling. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of your existence is always going to be stuff you remember, not stuff you're doing. Yeah. And the funny thing about the Frank Cotton thing is he said a perfectly reasonable thing. And the old codger who was causing trouble still I wanted to argue about it. That's codgers for you. Man. You oh. can't uncodger a guy. Yeah. Yeah, I have a guy who will try to uncodger you, but I think it's a scam. Yeah. It's like when <laughs> they try to unlock iPhones. <laughs> yeah. You can uncodger him, but he won't be as good. No, yeah, yeah. And then a lot of the features won't work anymore. Yeah, he'll eventually re codger. <laughs> the last oh Okay, we got trouble here. Oh, yeah. look at that little kitty. Trouble in River City. Yeah. Good kitty. She's all right. <laughs> I got a, a heck of a trivia question. Oh, bust. Let's do trivia first then. All right. Oh, bust. What were we supposed to do first? Oh, it doesn't matter. We usually do picture first. It does, there's no official anything. All right. <laughs> really? <laughs> um. Very famously, there was a large group of musicians got together and made a song some years ago for a charity, as you may recall. We are the world. Yeah. They sang over and over again, the many, many singers and celebrities. Um, a lot of times a singer would take a solo. Right? Yeah. Um, what was Billy Joel's line <coughs> in the song? Oh, wow. He did solo. Okay. Yeah, everything. I think Sting had like a sentence that he did, and Bono had a sentence, and then Billy Joel got one sentence. Okay. Shame of it, of course, Bono's is to not thank God it's them instead of you. I think that's him, right? Or is that do they know it's Christmas? That might be. That's do they know it's Christmas? Same oh, premise, I... different song. Yeah. Which, by the way, is the least stupid song of those two? That's a different trivia question, but they're both pretty stupid. We Are the World? Yeah. It's, it's less, less stupid, stupid, you think? I think Do They Know It's Christmas is stupid. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's... Yeah. Do they know it's... The they you're talking about don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah. 
So you're saying like, do they know that us uh, wealthy white folks are celebrating Christmas over here? <laughs> like, hey, uh, keep it down. Don't you know it's Christmas? <laughs> There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. Ah. Yeah, it's ungettable. You'll never get this. I only bring it up because I thought it was an interesting <laughs> trivia. Uh, is it a thing about how they might enjoy a sandwich with the money you give? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> hey. uh, yes, no. Uh, the line is, and the truth, you know, love is all we need. They gave him the Beatles line. They gave him the Beatles line. Isn't that nice? That is very nice, actually. I thought that was nice. That's the main reason I brought it up. That's that's actually good trivia because, well, it's good trivia in a number of ways. One, I could have got it if that just happens to be a song I listen to. Sure. But again, what kind of a weird playlist do you have for, <laughs> that makes it anyway? Only listen to group charity music. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, by the way, the best of all the albums is the... Um, apartheid album that was rap and you know um we're rappers and rockers united and strong strong here to talk about south africa we don't like what's going on oh that great song, i think that's the best of all of them because the other charity things mean well but they throw some money at a problem and the problem is still there it's good that you helped right but I would argue that that album that drew attention to apartheid helped spark actual change. Yes. It is one of the reasons Nelson Mandela got out of prison. Pretty good. And I don't think any other thing even comes close to being as effective. No, I think you could say that none of the other ones were effective at all. Yeah. And it's because of what a song can actually do. Because the other song accomplished the same thing that the uh, apartheid album did which was raised awareness right but awareness can't is not very filling no it is uh, very passive yeah <laughs> it's a very passive thing yep um, yeah it can lead to action but yeah. it isn't action yeah yeah they could have all done the same thing by just uh, donating some money Yep. And in this case, suddenly it was embarrassing for Frank Sinatra to be playing South Africa. Yeah. And it was embarrassing, you know, Paul Simon had to explain himself. Right. But you had a fine explanation, which his explanation was these are African artists who deserve to be heard. Fair. And okay. Okay. Nice loophole. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, soon it'll have to be the case that uh, artists stop playing like Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your leadership is uh, cruel and dictatorial and we will not play Florida. Yeah, that's a, not a bad idea. It, I mean, some, some artists are doing things like that in certain cities. Yeah. I support it. And also you probably don't want to play there because you're like, we'll only play at a concert where people are wearing are fully vaccinated or wearing masks. And you're like, no, we won't let you. All right, well, fuck you then. I'm not coming. Yeah, I think it's uh, going to come to that real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, I got to figure out what's going on behind you. All right, so there's not much more to see. Okay. This uh, house is in a rock. It, uh, it is, um, it's near. It's near? It, it's pretty close to Iraq. It's, it's definitely closer to Iraq than, say, uh, we are now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, are those homes, dwellings of some kind? Well, they're, uh, okay. they're definitely a place where people have have uh, stayed mm -hmm. when they needed to, a place to stay. <laughs> uh-huh. 
yeah. caves, maybe. Yeah, they are caves. And um, it's not Iraq, but it's near. Hmm. Uh, it could be Afghanistan. True. It could. Mentioned in uh, We Didn't Start the Fire. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, but you're close. Uh, Kuwait. Um, no. Wines and dines with Argentines and Kuwaitis. No, it is. Um, boy, there's one more place. Lebanon. I guess there's more places. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'll tell you that the uh, is the song "We Didn't Start the Fire." It is not. Okay, then and it's not then, or California. Millions and millions of folks in this fine place speak Urdu. That helps. Although I don't know if I, maybe everybody does. So I, but I know for sure they do here. Yeah, that would help someone smarter than me. Um, my sister's husband is from there. Nah, that doesn't help. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Iran. No. Persia. <laughs> wow. Um, Gone older. <laughs> the 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 dude in charge, man. The dude in charge has fairly still recently pretty inflammatory stuff about Israel and gays and stuff. Does that narrow it down? Are we back in Florida? <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> uh, Egypt. Um, it's, um, boy. Is it in the Middle East? <sighs> no. Um, kind of. Turkey. So, um, so. Minister. So I'll say somebody famous used to live, possibly could have lived in one of these caves. Ah, the Badlands. Uh, Billy the Kid <laughs> lived in a cave in the Badlands. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, to, uh, but all his his peeps, his crew, I'll say, are really good at the jungle gym. <laughs> they really love to practice on the jungle gym for some reason. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> the Taliban guys, uh, Osama bin Laden and his friends. Yeah, uh, which is not the Taliban. They were in uh, Saudi Arabia. They're from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. And they were. They, he was alleged to be hiding out in one of the a place like this in this place. Ah, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Where was he hiding out? Pakistan. That's right. He was. Pakistan. Huh. And if we'd have been, as the rumor goes, is had we been on our game, we could have got him sooner. But there were other stuff going on for the Bush administration. And, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking and all, maybe he couldn't have. I don't know. I think they like having him out there to uh, jack up their military budget. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah, they knew where he was. Yeah. I don't know what song you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh, I'll give you one more hint that has actually kind of a good hint. Um, uh, I don't know if these people know it's Christmas time either. Oh. <laughs> because they're Muslims? They would yeah. still know. I, yeah, but I don't know if they'd know, but th that's that hint is on the nose as far as like the word I said. <laughs> Christmas. Turn on all the Christmas lights. Because baby's coming home tonight. <laughs> I can hear her footsteps in the street. That's I don't know what. <laughs> well, I am well, at sea. Well, where where is this Christmas? Christmas in Pakistan. Very close. Well, Christmas in Iraq. Christmas in Christmas in the cave. <laughs> oh, help me out. Um, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, we, we're dying to know. Well, let's see what else it is. It's Christmas in this place, and we ain't never coming home. What? That's that. I gave you a whole lyric, just not the place. Christmas in 
and we ain't never coming home. Christmas in Pakistan, <laughs> we ain't never coming home. Um, it's Christmas, in, we ain't never coming home. Wow, I have no idea. I'll, I'll just give you another just in case you can get it from the lyrics between the Tigris and Euphrates. Is another this from of dreams. I don't think so. Okay, then I don't know. Another day comes to an end. It's Christmas in Fallujah. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. It's a Billy Joel song. It is? Yeah, Christmas in Fallujah. Okay, that so, wow, that's funny. Um, at some point, we should talk about it. Yeah, we should talk about that, because is that the title of the song? Christmas in Fallujah. They say Osama's in the mountains deep in a cave near Pakistan, but there's a sea of blood in Baghdad, a sea of oil in the sand. What? Yeah, Christmas in Fallujah. Googling Australian single. Christmas in Fallujah. I've never heard of such a thing. Wow, that's kind of cool, actually. Does it tell us? Not performed by Billy Joel? Is that right? Is it? No, it says Billy Joel. It's a single by Cass Dillon and Billy Joel. Wow. Exclusively from the iTunes store. Oh, fascinating. It wasn't wow. on. Wow. Interesting. So the way I come about this, you know, man, I, I think I just, I think that's the definition of a deep cut. Yeah, I'd say so. Fantastic. You did it. Wow. Well, I feel better. I was never getting that. Wow. That's cool. Well, I'm going to forego what I was going to choose. I feel like we should talk about Christmas in Fallujah. It's because both of us will have fun going, oh, this is what that sounds like. Yeah. Decide, deciding if we like it or not. It's a uh, super intense lyrics. Yeah, sounds that way. Now, the funny thing for me is I assumed you knew the song and I think I assumed I'd heard the song because I spent <laughs> so much time on billyjoelyrics.com because I want to do the picture game. Sure that I've seen the titles over and over of, of many songs that I know I've never heard, like, or songs that I'm like, oh, I don't remember this. But after a point, I'm like, oh, of course I've heard this song. And <laughs> I don't think I have. Hill. Christmas in Fallujah. Hilarious. Um, I have to listen to that. Yeah. Well, now you really have to, it's your homework, so. <laughs> really is. Um, is that the song for next week? Yeah, it's got to be. I'm going to change my mind on what I was going to pick. It's got to be Christmas in Fallujah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to pick something from River of Dreams. I'll hold off on that for at least two weeks. Okay. Christmas in Fallujah. I love it. Yeah, when I first saw the lyric, the title, I was reminded of a, I was like, for some reason, I've conflated it with Christmas at Ground Zero. And I corrected myself quickly because you know who that's by, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Classic Weird Al tune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would love if someday I heard Billy Joel do an album of funny songs, I would love that. Should I order? I, I'm asking Sue if I should order food. Yeah. Uh, how about Sambo? Okay, we're going to order it from Sambo. All right, so I think that's a good place for us to stop. Next week, let's find out what you guys got from Sambo. Oh, perfect. That'll be the trivia question. <laughs> <laughs>